How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This one's topic 15, energetics, thermochemistry, and we look at Born Harbor cycles. Oh, just before we get into this one, there's a few IB stories going around about this particular section of the course, and a few teachers who might be IB teachers that didn't actually want to teach this, and what ended up happening is they would call in sick and ask one of the other chemistry teachers to take it on board. I don't know if that's true, it's not true at my school, but it's a myth, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Anyway, I'm going to have a crack at it, do my best, let me know how I go, enjoy. Okay, Volume 2, Born Harbour Cycles, we look at calculations using Born Harbour Cycles, and we have a quick discussion about size and charge on the enthalpies of the lattice. So IB understandings is we need to use equations to represent different parts of the Born Harbour Cycle. We need to be able to construct a Born Harbour Cycle and then relate the size and charge to the lattice enthalpies. So before we start, a little bit of revision of topic three. The ionization energy of an element involves the removal of electrons from atoms to create ions. What is the definition of ionization energy? Always pops up in the exam. The minimum amount of energy required to remove, to required to turn one mole of gaseous atoms into one mole of gaseous ions. It's a key definition, so make sure you can remember it and then write it down if you're asked. Ionization energy, the minimum amount of energy required to form one mole of gaseous ions from one mole of gaseous atoms. Make sure you include the gaseous. The equation would be M gas goes to M plus as a gas plus one electron. Electron affinity also needs to be in the gaseous state. And the electron affinity is the energy change that occurs when one mole of electrons is accepted by one mole of atoms, forming a negative ion. Now, you can find both of these values from the data book, but a couple of them don't have second ionization energies. And it's important to understand that some elements do and some elements don't. Now, the first ionization energy of an element is usually exothermic, so it will release energy. But the second ionization is generally an endothermic process. So oxygen, for example, its first gaining of an electron, exo, but its second is endo. And overall, the process can actually be endothermic overall. So make sure you refer to table eight of the data book for that one. We need to be able to explain the size and charges of ions and how that affects the lattice enthalpy of different ionic substances. So we've considered the ions to be a sphere and an increase in the size of that sphere means that we have less charge dense ions. So if we have two things in group one, one is quite small, but the other is quite big, the charge is the same. So the ion that is smaller has a greater charge density. It can get physically closer to the oppositely charged ion and will have a stronger attraction. This is also true if we have a doubly charged ion. So doubly charged ions will be able to attract those, those negatively charged ions more strongly, thus it's harder to break the bond between the positive and the negative. So we assume that you know, volume and the charge density is an important factor and then is either doubly charged or a singly charged ion. So the construction of Born Harbor cycles for group one and group two oxides and chlorides. And there's a number of fundamental steps that occur for an, a compound to form an ionic lattice. And these are represented by these two geysers over here by Born and Harbor. The first process is we need to have atomization of a solid metal. So the metal as a solid turns into metals as a, as a gas. We have metal atoms in the gaseous state. We call that delta H of atomization. We also then need to have ionization of the gaseous metal. It loses its electrons and the non-metal gains them. So we call that the delta H ionization energy, IE. The next part of the process is we need to have atomization of the non-metal atoms, the not the non-metal into its atoms. And generally, because we're dealing with group, uh, sorry, 
we're dealing with oxides and chlorides, we're dealing with things that are diatomic. So we have a half X2 goes to X, and we need to balance that up because we don't have the same numbers of X's on both sides. So that's where the half comes from. That is atomization, and it's actually bond breaking for that one. We then have the electron affinity. Those atoms in their gaseous state will now be able to accept an electron to form an ion. So that's delta H of electron affinity. And then we have the reaction to form the solid ionic compound. So the metal, which is positively charged, reacts with the non-metal, which is negatively charged in their gaseous states to form the ionic lattice as a solid. And that's referred to as the delta H of lattice formation. So a born harbor cycle, find the overall enthalpy for the formation of solid sodium chloride from sodium and chlorine according, according to the equation given here. One of the bits of data that they'll give you might be some atomization of some of the metals. So we need to work out the delta H of formation for that reaction. It's delta H of formation because we've got our standard states of our elements forming the standard state of the ionic compound. So we need to apply all of those different types of reactions in our energy cycle. So the first thing that will need to happen is our sodium as a solid will be atomized into sodium as a gas. So that's the delta H of atomization and that information was given up the top. So that's 108 kilojoules. The next thing we want to do is turn our chlorine molecules into chlorine atoms. And the way we do that is by looking at the bond enthalpy. Now we have two chlorine atoms in a chlorine molecule. Now if we write the equation for the breaking of the chlorine to chlorine bond, if I have one mole of chlorine molecules, I would get two moles of chlorine atoms. And in the data book, that tells me that the amount of energy required to do that is 242 kilojoules. But I only need a half, I only need one chlorine atom, so I can divide that by two. So the breaking of the chlorine to chlorine bond is the atomization, which is 121 kilojoules. That can be found in the bond enthalpies part of the data book. After I've got my two atoms as gases, the metal will then need to lose an electron to the metal to the non-metal ion. So this is the ionization energy of the sodium atom. So sodium loses its electron to become a sodium ion, and this can be found in the table in the data book, which is 496 kilojoules. After the sodium releases its electron, the chlorine can then gain the electron, which is the electron affinity, forming a chloride ion. So the chlorine, it gains its electron, that electron, it undergoes its electron affinity, which can be found in the table, which is negative 349 kilojoules. So now we have our metal ions as a gas, our chloride ions as a gas, so we can form the lattice, that is the definition, given in the data book is 790 kilojoules. Because we're going down here, the down numbers are negative and the up numbers are positive. So to work out the delta H of formation, all we have to do now is add all of those numbers together. And that will give us the delta H of formation. So we have 108 plus 121 plus 496, and then we can take away 349 and then take away another 790. And that leaves us with our delta H of formation, which is negative 414 kilojoules per mole. So the delta H of formation of one sodium plus half chlorine to sodium chloride is negative 414. Find the overall enthalpy for the formation of solid magnesium oxide according to the equation. Label the cycle with the formulas and state symbols for the species present at each stage. So again, we've been given some data and in this one with an oxide, we need to be careful with magnesium and the oxygen 
Magnesium has two ionization steps, losing one electron, losing two electrons. The oxygen has also has two electron affinities. It will gain one electron and then it will need to gain another electron. So we need to be aware of that. So the first thing we need to do is on the bottom, we would have our magnesium oxide as our solid. That is our lattice. And here we would have our magnesium solid plus our oxygen gas. And this would be our delta H of formation, the difference between these two parts. That's the bit that we want to find. So using the values from the data book, we need to go through and label an energy cycle and calculate it. So the first thing to do is to turn magnesium as a solid into magnesium as atoms. So the delta H of atomization. Now that was given in the, in the data for the question. So the delta H of atomization is that first step there, which is 148 kilojoules. The next step will be to take the half O2 molecules and turn them into oxygen atoms. So just like before, we have O2 forming two oxygens. That would be the breaking of the oxygen to oxygen double bond. Now from the data in the data book, that tells us that the amount of energy required to do that process, the breaking of that double bond, is equal to 498 kilojoules. But I only need half that much because I only need one oxygen. So I divide that by two to give me 249. That would be the delta H of atomization of oxygen. The next stage in the process is to, to turn the magnesium, which is now a gas as, an, as its atoms, into magnesium ions. So I need to take into account that magnesium is a doubly charged cation. So I need to have the first ionization energy and then the second ionization energy and add those two things together. If you look in the table of ionization energies, you'll see that magnesium has the two written there. So we just need to plus those two things together for both of the ionizations. So the one of the ionizations is 738 and then the second ionization is 140, 1,451,000. Then the final, the next step in the process is for oxygen and its electron affinity to gain two electrons. Now I still need to go up here because that process overall will actually be endothermic. So the oxygen will gain the two electrons from the magnesium and I need to take into account both of oxygen's electron affinities. So the delta H of the electron affinity will be equal to the first electron affinity plus the second electron affinity, which in this case ends up being a positive value. So we have negative 141 plus 753, which is overall positive, which is why I've gone up in the enthalpy diagram. So we have a positive value of 612. Now we've got our ions in the right states, we can form the lattice. So the delta H of lattice formation is from the top of our enthalpy diagram down to our magnesium oxide solid. And again, in the data book that says the value is negative 3,791 kilojoules. So now we're in a position to calculate the delta H naught of formation by adding up all the values and working out our unknown. So by adding all the values together and then taking away the negative 3,791, we'll find the delta H of formation to be. Negative 593 kilojoules per mole. So volume two, some top tips. That was actually a challenge to try and get through. I hope I did a pretty good job. Make sure you practice and there's always a question on the exam in higher level for that one. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you.